Hello, people. I want to take you on a part of a journey with me of memory quilts. Because uh, I told you before that I'm making a memory quilt to, for somebody who lost her daughter very young to cancer. I think she was around 21. And the memory quilt is almost done. <clears throat> However, I had a lot of uh, clothes left. And also, um, the mother told me that uh, after she died, Xenia has her name, they started a foundation to help uh, teenagers like her, of young adults actually, to have um, to go on a holiday with their friends. Because usually young adults, um, they also have very close friendships. But uh, a lot of the organizations in the Netherlands helping young people who are terminally ill, like Make-A-Wish Foundation and stuff like that, all those organizations quit when you're 18. After that, there's not really anything for you. And also, the organizations that are there, they're focused on families. So there are organizations that help you go on holiday and say goodbye to your family. But there are not really organizations who help you um, with the friendship uh, transition, uh, saying goodbye. And I thought it was really beautiful that she thought about that, because indeed, when you're a young adult, friendships become so important. I think a lot of us can remember those intense first young friendships when you're growing up. I remember my friendships, they were very intense. So I was thinking, um, I made a memory quilt for the mother and the family, but I have a lot of fabrics left. And since the mother thought it so important to also make the friends have a space in the, in the saying goodbye of Xenia, it would also be good to give the friends something to remember her by. And uh, that also coincided with the fact that I had a lot of interesting fabrics, like this dress with the, with the flappy things, I don't know how to call it. Ooh, my neighbor is playing trumpet, I like it. Anyhow, um, I had a lot of fabrics like this that I couldn't really uh, use in a quilt because it was a bit complicated. And you can also only use so many fabrics in a quilt. Because at some point, it becomes too busy and I still want it to be like a beautiful quilt. And also, for example, the, the, with the flappy things, it was a dress. So you also have like this. And you also had like shirts like this. Apparently, uh, Xenia liked a lot of lace. And it's not really, I didn't, it didn't fit in the quilt. But I also didn't want to throw it away. So I decided to make like um, tote bags and pillows maybe, I'm not sure yet. But I decided to use all the clothes that I haven't used in the quilt to make objects for, for her friends basically. I haven't told the mother yet, so maybe this is an introduction for her as well to the project. Sometimes uh, ideas flow freely. But yeah, and I think I'm going to document this process because it's important for people to know that you can think much broader in terms of uh, saying goodbye to people. You can also think much broader than only blankets when you're making quilts. Um, a quilt is always a way to create meaning in your life. Also, and also to maybe keep a person, person's memory alive. I don't know if you know if the, if the friends will like the bags at all. But I think it will be a nice thing to have. And it's interesting for me to uh, work with as well. Because the clothes really have the energy. And... Um, I'm pinning it down on the tote bag, because uh, tote bags, you, you usually get those canvas things because it's sustainable. 
But then you get like a million of them and a tote bag is only more sustainable when you, when you use them like until they fall apart. But most people just have piles of them in their closet and I got lots of them from my parents and from advertising companies and stuff like that. So I'm repurposing those as well. Uh, I wanted to pin the flip flappy thing loosely. So uh, the flappy flappy will still have its effect. I'm not completely sure yet where and how I will attach it. Uh, I think we will have to figure it out together. But um, I will show you. Um, the bag will be closed like this. will be something like this. I know it looks very chaotic now because it's not attached yet and I haven't decided yet how to do it but this is the idea. I, uh, I'm curious, do you like it? And uh, keep an eye on my stories to see more of my, uh, this project and my other quilting project and I'm going to tell the model what I'm doing. And this is also experimental. Um, I'm also helping the Dutch Sustainable Fashion Week to motivate young teenagers to make to upcycle their clothes into quilts, re-upcycled bags with the help of tote bags. So I'm also going to use this project to give them inspiration. Because I think it's good for teenagers to not only think about the fashion part, but also think about the meaning clothes have. So I think with this project, the inspirational project of, of somebody young who's deaf, which is very sad, but did lead to an inspirational organization can uh, how how you can keep people close to you when when or when they died or when you have fabric that has otherwise good memories because you went on holiday with it festival shirts it reminds you of your childhood that there are many ways you can make something out of it and then you create clothing with value instead of a fast fashion I think the way out of fast fashion is by focusing on the meaning things can have. And, uh, and how much, and, and by focusing on the benefits of using meaning in your clothes instead of saying it's bad. So this is my project and I'm already a little bit touched by it because clothes of people have energy and I really feel this is the right way to go for me with this memory quilt. And I think the friends will love it.